Welcome to Rise in Practice from Lausanne, Switzerland, where this past week we had a 180 kilometer bike ride around the lake that I did not participate in. I am Professor Damien Hodari of EHL Lausanne. And from lovely London, welcome back to my flat. It's Anita Menderata, always excited to be with Professor Hadari for Rise in Practice, our every other week opportunity to really drill down deep in some of the practical issues that are impacting our industry. You asked for it, and as always, Rise is giving you exactly access to the people that you want to get the insight that you need. We've got a really special one this week. I must say, Demi, and I'm very pleased about this because this is one of my favorite colleagues when it comes to leadership, recruitment, and the future of work. His name is Jerry Noonan, and he is from Spencer Stewart. He's the co-founder of Global Hospitality and Leisure Practice. Spencer Stewart is one of the best firms in the world when it comes to international executive recruitment, a search firm, but equally, he also works with people at all levels because ultimately it's about understanding people's careers, not just each stage of the process. We've got Jerry with us and he's got some really good insights about how leaders and followers are following this year when it comes to finding out how to develop their futures. Jerry, over to you. In our work here at Spencer Stewart with the global travel industry, we have the benefit of, of speaking with uh, leaders, top leaders, and observing the decisions they're making as it impacts the organizations that they lead, that they are in, or in many cases, talking to leaders who have you know, exited their organizations because of the crisis. And that, that perspective allows us to uh, sort of see the world a bit horizontally, which is fairly unique, and hopefully what we can share today. Um, Every leader that has had to scale back their organization has said to us that one of the most important attributes that they look for when making decisions of who was going to stay and who was going to go was favoring the people with agility and adaptability. Uh, the ones that, that they felt like could be the most nimble in what is obviously very uncertain times. And if you think about the industry right now and what's going on, Historically, this industry has been a bit about process and repeated process and consistency of that repeated process to deliver a guest experience that, that is associated with the brand, whatever the brand may be across travel. Now today, the environment, and, and that was informed by data, history, market research. Today, all of that history, data, and consistent process is, is moving aside to deal with a very uncertain environment. So whether you're in the actual frontline hospitality rules and you're dealing with guests in, a, in an environment that's shifting quickly in terms of what guest expectations and experiences should be, you need to be agile and, and, and sort of adaptable to that. You also, even in leadership roles, need to be agile and adaptable because as organizations have scaled back, the same responsibilities exist and leaders are being stretched to do more broad roles within their, within their organization that requires an adaptability and an agility. And decision making has now taken on real time as opposed to history and data informing decision making. It's real time data, the ability to process that, the ability to react quickly to changes in the marketplace. So all of that are the attributes that I think, you know, are coming to the fore in the hospitality industry. And for a long time through recovery, perhaps forever, will be real hallmarks of people who are successful in the, in the hospitality industry, perhaps different than, uh, than, you know, in the past. The recovery is, uh, of travel is slow, it's uneven. It will take, uh, I think all experts you know, continue to believe and, uh, that it will take a much higher level of sort of safety in our society to restore travel to, uh, to a somewhat uh, close to historic levels that we had in 2019 heading into the crisis. The, the, the recovery could be quick, will be fairly quick. And one of the things organizations are going to have to deal with is after significantly scaling back, whether it's at the, at the front line or in the, in the management headquarters structures, 
a fairly sharp recovery that will actually make them sort of high growth companies for a period of time, adding people at a rapid rate, trying to maintain culture and engagement, building decision making processes with new people being introduced to those. And so uh, there's a real dynamic period ahead for the industry and the recovery, uh, the recovery of the industry. Certainly continuing to be vigilant as organizations are starting to scale back up and, and we're seeing that happen in particular with businesses that are more leisure and domestic oriented. Uh, but over time uh, is certainly one opportunity. There are a number of other industries though where people with the hospitality experiences can actually be, uh, can be welcome additions, right? If you think at the core of what hospitality is, it's a, it's a multicultural workforce. It is a business that is fairly advanced in its use of technology, both commercially and operationally, certainly much, much more so than many other traditional industries. Um, it is one that requires complex kind of operations strong people management and leadership, culture building, engagement, and, and kind of managing people in a, in a real time dynamic way. And other industries, even if not hospitality, can use that kind of leadership, can use that kind of marketing ability, can use that kind of HR ability, can use that kind of operational ability. And, and uh, using this period of time to actually gain some perspective learning in a, in a business model that's got some adjacent parallels, but is not traditional travel and hospitality is likely the best way to stay fresh, to stay current, uh, to come away with some insights and learnings about how other industries operate, facing some of the same kinds of operational or marketing challenges or HR or financial challenges. Uh, that will, when you, you know, the hospitality industry is coming back, is hiring, you'll have a, a story to tell, uh, an explanation of what you've been doing with your time. And, you know, either you'll decide this new industry is more appealing uh, and the new organization you've joined is more appealing and you'll stay put or, or you can leverage that experience coming back to the travel and hospitality industry when the recovery comes. Challenging yourself to think about how to be more agile, be more open to learning, how to, how to embrace change more fully and each of us individually so to have our own uh, constitution around that that you'll need to think about how to challenge and grow but but certainly most everyone can continue to push themselves on that spectrum. Um, likewise bringing some uh, finding these experiences outside of the industry but having that on your resume in your in your arsenal of storytelling about how you've adapted to a new environment what you learned in a new environment how you think that might apply to the hospitality industry when you uh, if and when you decide to rejoin the industry, it, all, of, all of which will help, help you be a better professional, help you be more compelling uh, in, a, in a process where likely the organization is considering several candidates and, and you want to be the one that sort of has the most compelling story to tell uh, of how you've dealt with the, the crisis. And I think even in and of itself, just that, uh, that kind of agility to go find another industry, find another job, have some success in that role reinforces the first point about adaptability and agility uh, that is going to be a, a differentiating aspect of this industry going forward. There's a few ways, even if not re-employed in another industry, that, that you can continue to stay current and learn and grow. Well, one is uh, some true professional development. Uh, online distance learning about topics that you have not had in your education or if you've, you know, your formal education is years past, you can sort of contemporize your understanding of various concepts around the business and how business and how it operates or leadership and how it operates. And so, you know, demonstrating and benefiting from learning um, during this period of time is, is something that, that can help position you when you go back to work and, it, and in fact help you be more successful when you go back to the workforce. And um, in a parallel way, there are lots of uh, organizations, volunteer nonprofit organizations that can benefit from, from people who bring skills to bear. And, you know, typically many of us would not make ourselves available to those organizations uh, because we're busy with our full-time employment. But in a world where you're not working full-time, uh, finding that organization where your skills can contribute, probably where you have some passion for the cause, is one more way to demonstrate to an employer that your, your work ethic, your agility and adaptability during a difficult time, and, 
and, and along the way make a you know make a difference in the world through uh, impacting that organization, which is also compelling to anyone who would hire you back. Uh, and that you have that part of your your personality and makeup, uh, and you've demonstrated that during this crisis. The real question for every CEO, every kind of leadership team in the industry right now is the, the, the timing of the recovery and, and in particular the shape of that recovery. You know, as we know, the, the travel ecosystem has lots of different types of travelers and the, the dynamics of when and how that travel restores if it restores fully in all segments is still uh, subject to much debate. But suffice it to say, when it's safe, the fundamental drivers of travel, what have driven growth for decades in travel, what have made it one of the highest growth, quote unquote, mature industries with you know, nearly double digit uh, running growth, separate crises and various interventions, but you know, on a going basis, should all restore. You know, there's concerns about governmental uh, positions, border crossings, more national, nationalistic kind of approaches by governments. But at the end of the day, the economic engine and impact of commerce, which is inextricably global in our society today and in our economy, will transcend many of those kind of political borders. So suffice it to say, this industry will come back and come back pretty quickly. And it's, it's back to a point I referenced earlier. So for these organizations that historically have grown steadily, added people to their organization at a, at a rate, have scaled back dramatically and are going to have to scale up pretty dramatically over the course of two or three years as that demand restores fairly quickly. And that, that in and of itself will create opportunities and challenges uh, when the time comes for leaders and leadership teams and and for anyone entering an organization where there's so many new people joining that decision making process, culture, how you drive engagement, you know, all the, the measures of kind of organizational vitality and how an enterprise is running and how the organization is functioning uh, are going to be put to test and, uh, and, and be subject to people impacting and driving those as leaders. It's a very good question, right? Is the favor to experience uh, or is the favor to the, uh, you know, to somebody who's going to grow and probably uh, by just nature of age, stage, and, uh, and the, the earliness of their career be more agile, more adaptable, uh, perhaps more driven. And I think regardless of where you are in your career, you need to demonstrate that you are well qualified, better than alternatives that that organization may be considering to hire to do the job at hand. And that's the, the, the job at hand, the content of the job at hand. Uh, and if you're coming out of an academic program or recent education, you might not have the depth of experience in the function, but you should have the understanding of how it works and overlay that actual experience and technical competence uh, with these attributes that we've been describing around adaptability, agility, uh, work ethic, uh, ability to interact well with a multicultural kind of set of colleagues and peers and in a multicultural organization. And um, I, I think for a long time, the, the industry will favor uh, experience for certain roles and kind of that, that forming you know, next generation talent that can come in and be shaped by the organization and, and both will matter. It won't be all experience or all kind of new people that, that are the recovery of employment within the industry. You know, I, I have admired and do admire the courage and grace under enormous business pressure that the industry's top leaders have shown. Um, you know, being a CEO or a top industry leader, which is where we primarily interact, is hard on a good day. Uh, there's a lot of forces, a lot of pressure, a lot of stakeholders. Overlaying a nearly unimaginable uh, shutdown or near shutdown of your business um, is, it, it, it's so easy to see how that should have been overwhelming. 
And yet, if you watch the public statements of so many of the CEOs in this industry, or talk to your you know, friends, colleagues, or reflect on the organization you're in or were in, and how those decisions were, were handled and communicated, has reminded me how this industry does attract some really exceptional people. And that in particular, they're leaders with, with a sort of a human heart and a human warmth uh, that's unique and special. And, you know, and our firm works across all industries globally. Uh, we meet wonderful leaders of all types and in all industries, but uh, new to the travel industry 20 years ago through this line of work, not where I spent my first part of my career, I have consistently been impressed with the warmth, the caring, and the humanity of the leaders and the leadership in the industry. And it's shown incredibly through this unimaginably difficult time for them. I'm a marketer by training, a consumer goods marketer. It's sort of my language and, uh, and what I grew up doing. And when I came out of school, I had a marketing class. I sort of learned it like so many uh, you know, people entering their career in the context of working on some great brands. It's the same concept. It is what, uh, how you think about yourself, your brand attributes, and how you consistently deliver those to the, to the audience that experiences you, the people around you. And that's a professional and personal context and construct that you should be thinking about. But who do you want to be? What will make you distinctive? What does make you the person that somebody wants to employ? What does make you the person that somebody wants to work with, work for? What does make you the person somebody wants to be a friend with? Those attributes uh, precisely defined, um, distinctly presented, and consistently communicated are, are who you are. And it, it's a, you know, thinking about it as a brand is a good framework to actually just define your purpose and your positioning in the world and how you want to live your life. And each of us gets to choose that. Hey, some really, really, I mean, valuable information and ideas there from somebody who knows clearly what he's talking about. And you know, give me, give me three things you took away from this. I must say, one thing I really appreciate about this, Damien, is that as Jerry said, he started off as a marketer. He started off in terms of brand delivery. And our industry is very much about brand-based experience delivery. Mm -hmm. It can become quite formulaic. There's a system to it. But he mentioned over and over and over again, the need this year to be adaptable, to be flexible, to be agile, to respond to the challenges in a way that still delivers an experience, but in a way that is respectful of and reflective of the challenges that we're going through. I thought that was really interesting, that ultimately it's always about delivering the brand, but in the context of the times in which we live. That I thought was interesting. I yeah, agreed. What I also found quite fascinating was when he spoke about the fact that at the end of the day, leaders are human. And we have seen, as you and I have talked about over and over again on Rise, it's been amazing to see people who have stepped up and shown leadership as a verb, not a noun, in terms of how we've navigated through these times. A lot of that is just wiring and why we check in all the time. Yep. A lot of people don't know how to handle crisis. Others suddenly find themselves wearing a cape and having superpowers even they didn't know. I thought that was really interesting how him making very clear, like Karen did a few weeks ago when she talked about, from an executive coaching point of view, resilience and stamina, this is a time to demonstrate how human we are, okay. and in doing so, we demonstrate our strength. I thought those, those points were really interesting. Oh, and I uh, there were a couple of things I thought that really stood out. One was this idea of, of a sharp recovery, right? We had a, a sharpest decline in the industry in history, as far as we, we know. And the expectation that when things do start to turn around, we're going to see a relatively sharp recovery, which means firms that are going to suddenly start to see the sums growing, not like a very mature firm and a very mature industry, but almost like a startup growing quickly, are going to need to hire people again quickly. So to be ready for that time, I thought that was really insightful. I hadn't thought about the speed of recovery that we might face and the implications it would have on people. So that to me was really important. And I like the point that, because we've raised this before through many of the questions we get from our audience, 
the fears people have about not only competing against other people, maybe looking for their first job if they're a recent graduate from a university, for example, but also competing against people with more experience who have had to, you know, have left the industry or, or lost their jobs. And I thought the point of firms are always going to need this combination, right? They're going to need some people with more experience, maybe more senior positions for more leadership positions, but also going to want these very agile and adaptable and really driven and eager young people uh, that are also going to be so thankful to, to find a position. So, you know, there is room for everybody. And, and the fact that we just got to keep encouraging people to stay active during this time, develop themselves professionally, take some online classes. Again, Jerry said that we've been saying that for a long time, develop these skills. There's plenty of places to do this. Don't waste these hundred days, which now are 200 days, which will probably be 300 days uh, before things start to turn around. So I thought some reassuring uh, words there and some insightful ones as well. And all of that feeds into what he was saying about personal branding, which I thought was really important that to sit back and let this time happen and hope, and hope that the doors open. We know how quickly regulations are changing. We know how quickly destinations, businesses are opening up and shutting down. How we respond to that becomes part of how our reputation is rebuilt. And ultimately, people are going to invest in bringing people on that they can trust to be able to make the right decisions at the right time yeah. with the right acumen to recognize now's what I need to do to make something really powerful happen. I thought the issue of personal branding, which is often seen as, is Damien wearing a blue suit or a gray suit or a white shirt? It's no. Is Damien someone I can trust and know that when there's trouble, I can call him in the middle of the night and he'll answer the phone and he'll be there by my side. I thought that was really important because as you and I have been saying, the line between personal and professional is so blurred this year. We need to recognize that who we are as people has a direct impact on who we are as a professional and vice versa. I yeah. thought that was great. I absolutely agree. And um, I think the, la the last point I would say that I, I took away from this was we've all got to adjust, right? We've all got to realize that we're not gonna be the same people we were before this happened. The businesses that we worked for or want to work for are no longer gonna be the same. And this ability to be agile, to adapt, to adjust is imperative. If we think we can be exactly the same, the position that we had before will be exactly the same. I can't imagine almost any, any job that was out there before will be exactly the same. And the, the sooner people realize that and, and make allowances for that and start to be proactive, better off they're going to be. Exactly. And as you and I keep saying, there's no going back to normal because right. there's no going back and there's certainly no normal. It's the next normal forward. And we're not even going to build back better. We're going to build forward better. Yeah. So I think it's very exciting. And the fact that Jerry stepped up when he got the call because we needed his wisdom and his advice says something about his personal brand, which says something about Spencer Stewart's personal brand as a professional organization which says something about RISE. So I'm very grateful to Jerry. Thank you for sharing all that insight. And Damien, why don't you give us a sense of what's next after that? Because we've got quite a fun episode coming up. Well, at least yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Fun and maybe a little bit different. Uh, we, you, you, know, you said we, we're always going forward. We can't go back. The new normal, the next normal. If we look at what's been going on in some different sectors in terms of office, co-working, hotels, Travel and tourism, restaurant, retail, all these industries are under great pressure to change. And what I think is particularly interesting and, and the focus for the next episode of RISE is how there's increasing convergence between these different areas and new business opportunities. We're mixing it up on the next episode by looking at how offices and travel and tourism and hotels are starting to converge into almost one entity that can provide multiple venues and multiple ways for people to interact and experience uh, these great industries. We've got two super guests from firms you may not have heard of, but both chief executive officers that are leading the way in developing this new area in hospitality and travel and tourism. And one of them is particularly special because ultimately we also know that we need to kind of look at the cost equation. Sometimes you have to buy bulk to be able to get the same value add. And sometimes the actual, the added value can be more valuable than what you actually bought in the first place. And you're getting at the point that you asked to finally meet a smart and attractive and charming Hodari. 
And so my brother, Jamie, who is the CEO of Industrious, um, the co-working company in the United States, he'll be on the show with us. Uh, and that'll be pretty interesting, I think, to see the two of us together. Oh, we'll make it interesting. Don't I'm worry sure. about it. <laughs> okay. And that doesn't undermine our other executive, Marlo from Curtain Hospitality, an amazing company and an amazing woman with so much to share and just thrilled that she's going to spend time with us as well. I think she sounds fantastic and I think she sounds brave. So do you actually want to join us that day? I'm not sure how crowded. I'm just going to sit back and let you talk to the two of them. And if you need me, I'm here to provide some technical support, but I'll be quiet. Well, I'm very excited to meet her. I'm very excited to meet your brother. And I'm very excited to see you back on the live stage. So until yeah. then, Professor Hadari, as always, stay safe, stay strong, stay hopeful, keep your hands clean, and we will see you and all of our global viewers of RISE on the stage. Take care, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye.